So I've been mixing two of my favorite crafts together, embroidery and bling, and I am loving how it is coming out, y'all. Look at that. Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I'm Patrice. If this is your first time here, please look at all the other content. Y'all, I love to craft all the things. So if you are into Cricut, if you're into Glowforge or lasering, whatever it is that you can think of, I've probably tried it or I've probably incorporated it into my business. So please be sure to check it out. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoy the content. Also, head over to Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and join the Craftable Things community there as well. For my returning subscribers and members, hey y'all, welcome back. So today, we are going to be doing two of my favorite things. Now, this video will be to show you all how to set up this type of design, how to create it yourself, and you too will be able to embroider and blink out a patch. So today you will be using, or I will be using Silhouette Studio, but I'm gonna be using the business edition of Silhouette Studio. That way I can save my design as an SVG and export it outside of the Silhouette software. I will also be working inside of Chroma because I have a Rakoma EM1010 and the software that I'll be using is the Chroma Inspire version of Rakoma's digitizing software and y'all, we're also going to be using our Cricut and our Cricut is going to cut out our rhinestone design that's going to go inside of our patch. So we're going to be doing quite a few things. So let's get started. Now we are inside of Silhouette Studio, the business edition, and we're going to create the letter that we will be using for today's project. I am going to select the text box option over on the left side, and we will be using a D today. And next on the right, I need to click onto the text style panel. I'm going to select the letter and we are going to change this font to bold marker. So as you see, this font has a very thin border around it and most fonts like this come inside of Silhouette Studio or any other design software like this. So we want to thicken the stroke or the outline of this letter and there are several ways to do it and today I'm going to show you one way of how to get this done because we want to be able to cut this out with either vinyl or I can take this over into my Chroma digitizing software for embroidery and create a satin stitch with it. So we want to do a few things with it. So this is how I usually get it done. So let's go. Now, if you notice, the size says that this is a 4.595 inch high designed by 1.984, but it is measuring all of that empty space above and below and the empty space on both sides of the letter. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna get a true size of the letter. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to select ungroup. Once I ungrouped it, it gave me a better idea of the size of the letter. So I know that I wanna keep this inside of a four by four hoop, for the purpose of my embroidery project. Now, if you're doing vinyl or anything like that, then your size can be whatever size you want it to be. But I do want to make sure that I'm able to keep this within a four by four hoop. So I am just resizing it and we're going to have this sized at a 3.830 high by 2.8. 8 to 8 wide design. Now that I have it sized to my desired size, I want to go ahead and change the color of the D. And so I can open up the fill panel over on the right side to do that, or I can do that by changing the color in the top left corner of the design software. And so we're going to change that color to black. If you notice, there is still a slight red outline around the D, but there is no point value to it. So there's no weight to it. 
So I'm going to change that red to pink. And what we will do next is we want to either open up the line style panel, which is the fourth option down on the right side. And this can help us to thicken up our, our line, our outline. Now, also at the top, in your top toolbar, you can do the same thing as well. So we are going to change the point value of the D that is going to be the outline. We're going to change that to 10. Now that we have it changed to 10, you can kind of see it's a little bit thicker. Okay, or a lot thicker actually. So I want you to pay attention to the D and notice that the bounding box around the D is actually touching parts of the D. So that lets me know that something like this is not all together. Whenever you have it done correctly and whenever this is going to stick, you will notice that your bounding box will be completely around your shape, your letter. It will not touch it. I am going to right click it and we are going to duplicate it. And we will leave this over here on the side because I want to show you guys why it's important to do what we're doing. Okay, so now we're just going to leave this over here on the side. We're not going to touch it. And we're going to work with the D on the left. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that D. And we are going to open up the modify panel on the right side of the screen. And this panel is represented by a rectangle with a circle in the corner kind of cutting through it. Next. I am going to select subtract all. What this is going to do is this is going to separate the black part from the pink. Okay. So it's going to separate the fill from the stroke. So now I'm going to select subtract all. Once I select it, subtract all, notice that the bounding boxes, they went around the entire D as opposed to the one on the right where we see it kind of touching. Okay, so that is a big difference. Right now, this is letting me know that this is going to be just fine. Okay, so what I need to do next is I am going to ungroup this. So I'm going to right click and select ungroup. Once I ungroup it, if you notice that bounding box still stayed around the entire D, but there's also now an internal bounding box, and that is for the letter or the fill inside of the D. So I'm going to click the fill inside and move that out of the way. So now that we have two parts of the D. We have the outline of the D, and then we have the internal part of the D. So if you look here, the D, the outline of the D, it no longer shows that there is a point value attached to it. If you look in the left hand corner, it is showing that the D or the outline of the D is now a fill. So we turned that into a shape so that we can be able to use it and have a thicker outline. The fill, which is the black part, it still shows that there's a 10 point thickness to it, but there really isn't. So I'm just going to click onto that D and then I'm just going to reduce that to zero, reduce the point value back to zero. And as you notice, the size didn't change at all. So now we're going to just place this right back on the inside and I am going to create the rhinestone component of this now. In order to do that, I'm going to select the fill and then I'm going to open up the rhinestone panel on the right, which is the last one in my screen. Now that I have both these done and I just want to use this one for comparison so that you can see why I did all the other steps that I did. We're going to save this. So I'm going to click save as, save to hard drive, and we're just going to call this, it really looks like Dunkin Donuts, but we're going to just call it DD and save it as an SVG file. Okay. And so before we move on, I want to create an internal offset inside of the fill because I want to create rhinestones on the inside. So I'm going to select internal offset. If you notice, there is the little faint red outline. We're going to change the color of the fill to purple. And I am going to remove 
the outline. So now we have our fill. And I'm just selecting the black part because we no longer need that for what we're going to do right now. And for this part, I can go ahead and delete this D also because we already saved it. Now I'm just going to select the purple inside. And we are going to open up the rhinestone panel. And the rhinestone panel is on the right at the bottom. And we're going to turn the inside into stones. And we're going to select 10 SS. And then I am going to select the radial fill. I also want to adjust the spacing to 0 0.015. And this is our rhinestone design for the inside. So once we get ready to set up the embroidery machine and stitch out the outline of the D, then we will go ahead and cut out our stones. I'm just going to select release rhinestones. And once I do that, or once the software releases the stones, I'm going to add a few stones in where there, there's empty spaces. So here I'm just going to add a stone. And if you want to see how I do this in depth, I do have other videos on the channel that shows me doing this process. So now I'm all done adding all the stones that I wanted to add. And I am just going to select all of the rhinestones. I moved the outline out of the way. And I'm going to right click. And then I'm going to group all of those stones together. Once they are grouped together, I'm then going to make them into a compound path. And we're just going to fill those circles in. And we are all set. And so I just want to note the size of this part of the design and save it. So we're going to click Save Selection As. Save to hard drive. I am then going to say DD rhinestones. The size stones that we used are SS10. And the size of the design is a 2.563 wide by 3.568 high. And then we're going to change the format to SVG. Okay. So now that that's saved, we are going to head into our Chroma digitizing software. So now we are inside of Chroma, which is the digitizing software for my Wacoma. And we are going to import or merge in that file that we created. And we're going to use the original file that we created, the DD SVG file. And I want you to notice the difference in how these particular images imported inside of the software. So the one on the left is the one where we subtracted and we did everything that we needed to do to make sure that that outline would be seen. The one on the right, we had it outlined. But if you notice, when it imported into our software, the outline is gone. Right? So that we won't be able to do you can still do it but it's going to take a little more work as far as us creating a satin stitch if that's the stitch that you want to create around it so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to delete the one on the right and we are going to work with this one over here on the left so i have selected now the outline and what we need to do at this point we need to create a applique. So I separated the outline from the fill and we can go ahead and try to just auto digitize it and see what it will look like. So to auto digitize, I'm just going to select the A in the top left corner and we're going to say yes, that's what we want to do. And the stitch is a satin stitch and it actually looks pretty good. The way that it auto digitized. So I am going to 
make the stitch length of 3.0 and the density of 0.30. And we're going to click apply. And let's change the view to realistic so we can kind of get an idea of what it would look like. And honestly, it looks good to me. So you can create your own satin stitch around the D by selecting the satin, classic satin option over on the left side. But I actually like how this auto digitized. So we're going to leave this like that. I am going to delete the fill because we won't be using the fill. But if you were to stitch the inside, you would pretty much either do the same thing or just trace around it and fill it in with the stitch that you prefer. We're just going to delete that. And I am going to also delete the artwork from behind it. And we just have our deselected. So next I'm going to select that D and we're just going to group that together. So that way, whenever I move the D, everything will move with it. So it's possible that I might want to create an applique with this and not just stitch this directly onto the material. So I want to trace my D with the run stitch. And we're going to select the run option on the left side. And I am just going to trace the D. So we're going to start, and I'm going to kind of start over closer to the inside and not the outside. All right, so we're going to go up here, and then I'm just going to create the outline. So we're going to do this twice. Well, I'm just going to do this one time, and we're going to duplicate it because we need a placement stitch and a tack down stitch for if we want to create an applique. All right, that's done. And as you can tell, there is our stitch. So we need to not forget the inside also. So let's go ahead and do the inside. I am known to forget about the inside and you don't want that. And that's all set. So I'm just going to select the run and we're going to group that together also. All right, so I need for this, for the run stitch to stitch first before we do the satin stitch. So I am going to change the order and I'm just going to move it up above the D. Okay. And so we're also going to duplicate this as well. And click duplicate. And then I'm just going to paste it down. And we're going to place this right on top of that D also, okay? And we also want to send this to the back as well. So now on the right panel, we have two run stitches. So the first run stitch is going to be our placement stitch. The second run stitch is going to be the tack down stitch to tack down the material. And then the third stitch is going to finish it off with the satin border around the D. All right, guys, so we're pretty much done with this design. We can use it as an applique or we can just stitch directly onto whatever material we're going to be putting this on. Now, one thing that I did not show you earlier is to check the size of the design. So this is very important, especially if you're going to be using a specific size of hoop. And also the way that we're going to be mixing media we want to make sure that the size is correct so that the other part of the design will fit as it needs to. And as we see here, the size is correct. It is a 2.97 by 3.98. And that is comparable to the size that it is saved as in Silhouette Studio. 
Okay, so everything looks good. We need to save it. We can also do a quick redraw just to see how it's going to stitch. So just to make sure, so there's our placement and our tack down, and then now it is going to stitch the satin stitch around the D. All right, everything looks like it's going to stitch out beautifully. So now we are going to save this. So I'm going to select save as, and we are first going to save this as a Wacoma file. So I'm just going to type in D and we're going to call it D bold marker. And I am going to note the size in the description or in the file name. We're going to say save. And then we are also going to save this as a DST and a PES because my Wacoma uses DST. So we're going to click DST and we are ready to go. All right, guys. So we are going to get ready to import the file into our machine and I am going to make sure that we are not in embroidery status. I'm going to select the very first needle and then we are going to select file. Now that we have the file option open, let's check our flash drive and here is the file that we're going to be using I'm just going to select that and then I'm going to upload that onto the machine and now it will be here and we're going to just select that file click OK and here we are I'm just going to move it down just a little bit to kind of center it in the hoop a little bit better. There we go. And now we're going to get ready to place the hoop on the machine. All right, y'all. So now we're ready to place the hoop on the machine. And now we're going to get ready to for today's project we will be using cutaway stabilizer and right now I'm putting the placement stitch onto the stabilizer so that we can go ahead and place the fabric on top I will be using jean fabric today and we will be using red thread. I can't wait to see how this is going to come out. I think it's going to look amazing. Alright guys, so I trimmed all of the material around. I could have got a little bit closer there, but we're going to go ahead and place this back onto the machine. And when doing applique, I know this isn't really a detailed video, but you always want to make sure you keep your hoop hooped. You don't want to remove anything because that will throw it off. Alright, so now we're going to click start. You can also use a cutting machine to cut out certain types of fabric so that you don't have to worry about getting into small parts of your design and risk cutting your stabilizer. So now we are just going to finish off our patch 
by placing the satin stitches around the design. And now that that's all done stitching, we need to cut our flock so that we can have our rhinestone template and brush in our stones. And now after this is done, we will head over to our craft table and finish our project. Of course, I'm using stones from the baby's booty and light cyan. Transfer tape down and just spinning it and press. So all of the parts are ready to be put together. And so today we will be using a Cricut mini press to press the rhinestones and also use some bead and bond onto our embroidered patch. And I have a piece of parchment paper just to prevent anything from sticking because we will be using this heat and bond and I placed the heat and bond on the back and I'm just cutting around it just to remove some of that extra material of the heat and bond. And so we are going to be pressing this at, if you're using a regular heat press, I would just press it for like 305 degrees for maybe five to seven seconds. It really doesn't take that long to apply the heat and bond and we're gonna be using more heat anyway. So right now that's all set and I'm just going to remove the rest of the heat and bond from around the edges of our design. If you notice, I cut some of that extra material off that kind of seep through where the satin stitches are just so that it can look a lot cleaner and I also burnt some of the edges so I'm really happy with the finished look of this. Alright so next I'm just going to remove the inside because that is a sticky part now since we added the heat and bond and I don't really want that onto anyone's jacket because I don't want anything else to be able to stick to it. So this is looking really good and clean and I'm loving already how this looks. This D, even without the bling, looks amazing as is. All right, so now we're just going to apply our hot fix rhinestones to the D and y'all, that already looks good. And of course, I'm folding that parchment paper over. I have my mini press on the second notch and I'm pressing this in parts because of course the mini press is not large enough for us to press it whole. But you do wanna make sure you press it and apply a little bit of pressure and y'all look how this looks. This turned out great. I'm absolutely loving this. And so I just removed the backing to show you guys that's all you would do if you need to press your patch onto a sweater or a jacket, or hoodie, whatever it is that you want to use. But y'all, look how amazing this looks. I love this project and I can't wait to. All right, y'all. So we are all done with making our blinged out embroidery patch and I absolutely love it. Now, I got this idea from one of my students asked me to make them a varsity jacket. And so, of course, I wanted to add a little bling. And this is where um, the idea came from of making the patches with the bling. And I absolutely love how this D turned out. And I have been making a lot of these letters. I love, I love this project. I love incorporating bling with embroidery 
I think it looks very, very nice and very professional. So I hope you all learned something from this video. I hope you learned how to do this yourself if you have this type of software. If not, I will have these listed in my shop very soon on my website, craftfulthings.com, where you can purchase a letter if you are interested in purchasing the digital file for these types of designs. But y'all, look at that. That looks so, so nice. I absolutely love it. If you are interested in any of the products that I used in today's video, a link will be listed below in the description. A link to the Wacoma embroidery machines will be listed below. A link to these amazing rhinestones that I used from the baby's booty will also be listed below in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to head over to Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and join Craft with Things there as well. But that's it for today, y'all. Thank you all so very much for watching. Until next time. Thank you.